I feel it honored to be amongst you just to throw certain areas of challenges before you so that we make the best use of the resources available to us. Nature has given so much. How much we get out of it is the endeavor that we put in for the benefit of mankind. You see, the talk is a bit lengthy, but I will restrict myself to a couple of slides. I would uh, deliberate upon these bioresources and then try to show the strength of the plants, what the plants have contributed for the welfare of humanity health of the people, and how much strength the plants have to offer more. There are 300,000 plant species. Only one third of them have been scientifically investigated, even if we take different systems of medicine into account. At the same time, so this is a great opportunity for the scientists to work on the gray areas where there's a plenty of challenges and plenty of opportunities. The challenges are, WHO figure says that there are about 2,000 diseases in the world. Out of 2,000 diseases, only one third are curable. Therefore, 1,400 diseases are managed symptomatically and looking for a cure. Such a big challenge. I'm not quoting this figure from anywhere else other than the WHO. Such a huge challenge that in the modern system of medicine, so much growth has taken place. So much has been done, scientific advances have been done, but still humanity is suffering. And when humanity is suffering, what is the cause? Spread of diseases, incurable diseases, and those diseases where there is a no permanent cure. And that's a great challenge for the scientists of tomorrow. <laughs> for getting into this area of plant product development, whether we talk of the plant-based pure molecules, or we talk of the complex situation of the traditional systems of medicines, main purpose is that we should get a material which is of high quality, which has a no safety risk involved, and is really active. And fourthly, it should be affordable. These are the four parameters when we think of a product development in the area of healthcare products. It is very necessary that we should understand what is the regulatory pathway. When we start working, if the regulatory pathway is not known, we go heavy we end up with a product which has nowhere to position it. Therefore, it is absolutely essential what segment we are going to tackle, in which area we are going to position our product. I will touch the regulatory pathway in the country. And then new emerging areas, like the area of phytopharmaceuticals, which was introduced in India, by the Gazette notification of the government of India in 2015. And thereafter, the CSIR, the ICMR, as well as the DBT and DST, they all gear up their planning in the direction of development of the phytopharmaceuticals. There was a reason of uh, bringing out 
the area of phytopharmaceutical, I will narrate afterwards, what was the reason, why did we start this phytopharmaceutical area? Because we three, four persons were involved in pushing this forward. Dr. Nityanand was the chairman of that committee. And uh, we had been struggling for the last 12 years and we could succeed only in uh, 2015 that the Gazette notification came out. Our country is very unique from the rest of the world. We have a multiple, multiple city, pluralistic society in all aspects with regard to our cultures, our faiths. There is so much diversity. But out of this complexity, it is our approach how we look at it. So far as the drugs are concerned, somebody remarked that India is a therapeutic jungle. So whether it's a therapeutic jungle or a therapeutic garden, if I would say, I would say therapeutic garden. And a person with a closed mind would say it is a therapeutic jungle. You see here, India is the only country where four or five systems of medicines are recognized officially by the government of India. I would say that's a great opportunity. People would say it's a mess. That's a negative approach. But I would say it's a great opportunity. We have recognized Ayurvedic system of medicine. We have rec recognized Siddha system of medicine, Yunani system of medicine, homeopathy system of medicine, and above all, the allopathic system of medicine. All the systems have been recognized, and they have the, these have the regulations in place. How much regulations are implemented is a question of varies from state to state. So that kind of regulatory pathway we need to understand. What way we are going to develop the products. Genesis of the phytopharmaceuticals within these complexities has a reason for it. You see, the medicinal plants, if you trace the history, probably before the human life came on the earth, medicinal plants were existing. So prehistoric time, the plants were known to be useful for health. And it was, it was pick and choose, initially hypothetically, subsequently with some knowledge, and then with the knowledge of the third eye. This is how the systems of medicines are evolved. Ayurveda, Greek system, Yunani, and Siddha. These were the three systems which are evolved. And it was up to the 1800 that we were dependent on these systems. But from 1800 onward, the situation differed as we advanced in science. I will show you the picture how the journey of the medicinal plants went through all stages. And ultimately, we are coming back to the plants. Well, this is what, what the wealth we have. You see, bioresources, when you talk of the bioresources, it is a very rich and economic strength of a country. And earlier, these bioresources were considered to be global heritage. But with the changing regulation, international trade regulations, emerging trade regulations, at international level, it's no longer a global heritage. Bioresources is a wealth of a nation itself. Therefore, conservation and sustainable utilization should be a fundamental principle when we have, we have such a resource available to us. These bioresources, certain countries have put certain biodiversity issues in such a manner 
that they become a stumbling block in taking the plants. Say, for example, North Korea. My visit to North, North Korea, Pyongyang, shackled me that you can't touch even a leaf from the street trees growing on the wall streets. Because their rules are so stringent, you don't dare to touch any, any vegetarian, vegetable material uh, from the sources which are available. You have to seek a permission. On the contrary, there is so much of destructive way of collecting the plants that we are destroying. So these are two extremes. And Biodiversity Act, when it came into India, it has created certain problems also, but at the same time, it was for the good of the country to conserve the bioresources. Conservation and then sustainable utilization should be simultaneously understood by the Biodiversity Act. But there has been a gap of understanding from the utilitarian point of view how we can utilize, how much we can utilize of the natural resources that some of the multinational companies are still struggling very hard to get back to this area. Anyway, this region is one of the mega biodiversity centers of the world. And if we couple it with Indo-Burma hotspots, it's the it has eighth positions out of the 34 hotspots of the world. You can see the richness of the country. But I would give you the other picture in some other slide where I would show that how much we are destroying and how much we have destroyed. So this region has been chosen particularly. And I have seen in debates at ICMR, at DBT, at CSIR, Northeast comes everywhere. So much importance has been given to Northeast because of the richness of the resources. And most of the grants, it is said that at least 10% of your total budget should be devoted for the growth of the Northeast. And that much liberal attitude, if the government has, it is up to you how much we sensibly utilize for the growth of the region and for the prosperity of the entire nation. Well, we discussed at CCI, CSIR and DBT, and three areas were identified. One is a captive cultivation. There are certain plants which are in great demand, not only in India, but abroad. Therefore, it is quite necessary that instead of removing all the plants from the natural resources, unless this is a renewable plant material that we can use, but uprooting a tree or a root or a stem or a bark or uh, any part which is um, not renewable, we are destroying our plant materials. So that's a well thought of idea to have a captive cultivation of medicinal plants in the Northeast. For those plants which have a great demand, market value, not to export plant as such, but value add. What is the value addition is a production of the standardized extracts. Now the standardized extract of course have a great demand for dietary supplements in US in Europe, provided they are standardized, they are of high quality. So that's the second area which has been identified so that we have a GMP facility for produ producing the extracts with quality standards. Third area which has been identified is a phytopharmaceutical area. NCE is not has been identified. NCE means single uh, chemical entity, molecule, single molecule drugs, because that lot of work has already been done. And single molecule again takes, it's a long journey to go to the level of the drug. Therefore, this area phytopharmaceutical has been considered to an intermediate, where when these researchers are working, they get an extract active. Up to the extract level, it can go to the traditional systems of medicine. But when the extract is purified, and you come out a, with a fraction which is active, 
that fraction need to be characterized with respect to the constant present. And that becomes a phytopharmaceutical.